let's begin this video with a quick review of what we've done so far in terms of setting up our layouts and our sheets um, from beginning a site one a dash one is the site plan sheet then we go to a dash two that's our floor plans a dash three our roof plan a dash four our elevations and these look pretty good, A-5 elevations, in terms of having put sufficient information on them to get started with the, con um, the next steps for construction documents. The only one that has no annotation so far is the wall section. If you take a look at here, it's labeled wall section, and it's labeled as number one, and we are on sheet A6. Now, this is a cross-reference to the section marks that we have included in some of the other sheets. As an example, if we look at our floor plan, we've indicated what we call a wall section identification symbol here that shows the direction of the view of a section cut that we're taking on the wall here. And it's labeled one, which refers to the wall section number one that we have on A6. So we've got that located here on the floor plan. We've got that also cross-referenced here on the roof plan. We don't have it on the elevations. We don't need that. And again, because we're using a technique of overlaying all the information on one drawing, um, it shows up here in the site plan. We don't want it on the site plan. So let me go ahead and open up that viewport. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the freeze with the viewport open and go ahead and freeze this part of it. And it disappears. Let's go ahead and get out of that. Double click outside, zoom out. So now it's no longer where we don't need it. Um, now let's go back to the wall section. So let's begin with annotating this. Like everything else we've done in here, with the exception of some things like north arrows and the drawing titles here, and obviously your title block information, we've been doing everything in model space. So let's go ahead and let's go to model space, and let's take a look at what we're going to begin to do. Now, if we take a look at the sample drawing, um, and you take a look at it, we already have a sample of how we want this annotated. Now we're going to make some modifications to that. We're going to make some adjustments. And your drawing may vary a little bit from the sample drawing. So the first thing we want to do is sort of take a look at what we've drawn so far. I'm going to go ahead and pan this up just a little bit like this. And I'm going to make some adjustments. Now, if we go back to the sheet itself, you can tell that this is set to a 3 quarter inch is equal to 1 foot scale. That's a very common scale for wall sections. Now this looks like it's all isolated on this very large sheet, but remember, for this assignment we are just indicating the first typical wall section of um, a typical area of the house on how it's put together. Usually a full set will have uh, many wall sections, building sections, details that would help populate this sheet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open it up I'm going to unlock it because I want to pan this over just a little bit more to the left, maybe to about here. We can always adjust this later on. I'm going to relock it and I'm going to do some additional adjustments on the inside. Let me go ahead and close my viewport. I'm going to go back to model space and I'm going to do a little bit of work on this one here. Now, the reason I can do that is, um, if you recall, when we have all this jumbled information in here, it was much easier for us to do the work right here. Model space by opening up the viewport, making sure it's locked, and adding our annotations at this point. But, because the wall section is sort of isolated as were these um, elevations, we can do the work right in here. So let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pan to the left and I'm going to start making some adjustments with some of these temporary lines that I had to mark the edge condition of what we wanted to do. I really don't need to bring it out that far. I could bring it in maybe to about here and maybe bring in some of this information in just a little bit. 
Again, with uh, maybe the foresight of knowing that I'm going to have several wall sections on that sheet. So you don't want to have something which is sort of duplicating information you don't need. So I'm going to move this temporary line just to about here. I think that's going to look pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and trim out using that as my trim element. And I'm going to start trimming out a number of the elements in here. I can delete these. Go ahead and trim again. Come on down here. And let's trim some of this information. I'm also going to, I want to bring this in a little bit. Now I could use the stretch command for this. So I can stretch this. And let's just bring that in maybe to about here. Now if you notice, the hatch did not stretch with it. Hatches sometimes will not stretch. I think in, in most instances they won't. But all you have to do is highlight it. And if you notice, it gets a perimeter around it with grips. So we can grab it by the center grip and bring it to this mark where we had this blue line, which was the perimeter going around in there. So that looks pretty good. We've sort of taken our width of our section cut and brought it in just a little bit so we'll have some more room. Now, this line right in here, if you notice, is in depth point, so it won't print. I'm going to delete it anyways because I'm going to replace it eventually with a small break line that goes from here to here and a break line that is going to go right in here. So. This represents where my break lines are going to be. I'm going to go ahead and copy this a couple of times. I'm going to copy it once to the right, which is going to represent where my fonts and my text is going to be for my annotations. And I'm going to do the same thing over to the left side. Let's bring that over. And I'm going to bring that just to there and bring it in a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to begin to do is I'm going to establish a column of annotations here on the right side and a column of annotations here on the left. And I'm using these lines so that they all align um, as you go down. The drawings look much, much better when you do that and it's much easier and simpler to read. Now in doing that, first thing I want to do is sort of take a look at the section and begin to think about what I'm going to be annotating, what information I'm going to be giving. Now the purpose of a section is to increase the scale so that you can actually zoom in and when you print it's at a much larger scale, three quarters inch, as opposed to the floor plans which are a quarter inch, so that you can actually as you look into the wall section there's a lot more detail involved. And whereas we were using nominal dimensions when we were doing let's say eighth inch drawings or quarter inch drawings, when we get to the scale of three quarter inch, we want to use what we call actual dimensions. So a two by four is not two by four, it's going to be one and a half by three and a half um, and information like that. So it's very, very important that we set our scale. I've already gone ahead and set my scale for annotation here to three quarter inch, so the font sizes are going to be correct. So remember, this information down here is called an annotation scale of the current view. So it's important that this be set accurately. Now, a lot of the information that we're going to be putting in is going to be some of the same information that we've used already in the elevation. Some of it may come from the floor plan, um, etc. But what you have to make sure is that there is no conflict with the information you put here and the information that you have already done. Sometimes the easiest thing is to go ahead and just copy some of this information and bring it over and then locate it where you think it's going to be best used um, to represent the wall section. So make sure that you're always coordinating uh, the different sheet sets, the different views, the information that you're going to have um, in all your different drawings um, for that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, I'm going to grab some of the other items that I've done in here. So this being our elevation tags, which represents what maybe might be the top of the beam or the top of the slab. Uh, it represents the vertical 
um, changes that you have as you go up during the construction. So we have three scales that I had created sort of as a uh, template already put in there and sort of as blocks. So what happens is since we increase the scale from quarter inch to three quarter inch, the size of the font so that it stays in paper space printing at the same size if it's three thirty seconds of an inch there's an inverse relationship between the size of the font and the scale that you're putting in so if we increase the scale to three quarter inch that means that the font has been reducing in size accordingly so this right in here is the one we are using for three quarters of an inch in other words, when printed at three quarters of an inch on a sheet, this will still be at three thirty seconds of an inch, which is the size we've selected for our fonts. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to bring it from this point, and I'm going to bring it down to my wall section. Go ahead and take ortho so we can bring it in here. So now where do I want to locate it? Now even though it says top of beams, that's we're going to adjust that. So the top of my beam at this point is located right here. We have a top plate right above that, and then we have a lot more information in here, but this is the information that we want to locate that to. So remember, I had created these temporary guidelines to be able to put our fonts into and our, and our uh, annotations. Well, I want that lining up with this point right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this from that to perpendicular. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this out and bring it relatively close, make sure ortho's on. And I'm gonna bring it about to there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and move all of this, make sure you grab all of those. And I'm gonna bring it up to here and make sure using my object snaps that it snaps to that point. So. For now, this says top of beam, elevation nine foot zero. So that is what we had located in the block, but this obviously has to adjust. So before I adjust that, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna copy this down. And I'm gonna copy it from this point. And I'm gonna bring it down to the top of the slab. So I'm going to make sure I snap to this point. Don't snap here to the recess, but snap to this point. And hopefully it'll line up. I think what I'm going to do is I might draw just another line somewhere in there um, to bring it in and make sure that I do not lose where I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and move. Let's see if keep for previous works. No, I'm going to go ahead and highlight these two. And I'm going to move from that to perpendicular. I'm going to delete that guideline that I had put. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to bring it to there. I don't want to bring it in because there may be too much line work happening right in there. But we know that this is going to represent the top of slab because I'm going to go ahead and change that. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to top of, with my cap lock on, top of slab. And if you recall, we set this as our benchmark elevation as zero feet, zero inches. Now, if we go back to our site plan, you can see right in here that we have top of slab indicated as elevation zero feet, zero inches. We also have a value for what zero feet, zero inches represents related to the vertical datums NAVD, uh, actually NAVD 88, and that corresponds with a value of five feet above what would be considered sea level. Um, I think it's high water mark, but we have to, I have to do a little bit of research on that to make sure. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out of this, zoom extents, and head back to my model space. And that looks pretty good. I don't need to put that value in here. We've already got it on the floor plan. This is more of a detailed type of drawing, so I'm just going to leave that there. Now, let's go back up to here. <coughs> this says top of beam, which is correct. It is a concrete beam. 
but because we have this three quarter inch recess down in here this ends up not being nine feet now you could technically just say nine feet and they pour and they just would pour probably a little bit bigger beam because remember this is all modular so by the time you take your modular block or cmu and stack it up if we didn't have the recess and we had a 12 inch beam at the top it would come out exactly to nine feet but because our recess and we're starting three quarter inch down we have to remove three quarter inches from here so let's go ahead and highlight that up i'm going to put eight and i'm going to put 11 and a quarter so again i didn't want this to snap down to the next point so i'm going to pull that over and that looks great okay now if you think it's a little bit too far over we can always adjust that later on using the stretch command um, there's a lot of different things that we can do to make this look a little bit better all right so we've got those two tags which establish where our top of slab is and top of beam and what we want to do is to begin to give the information and through that column begin to bring it down as we go down highlighting all the different parts of the construction so let's go ahead and rather than starting from scratch sometimes as i mentioned before you can begin to borrow and copy some of the additional information that you've already put on the elevations now a lot of this information you're going to be putting on let's say this is a typical wall section that's used by the company you're working with or you've used it a lot you may have blocks of all this information already um, an example is you may have old drawings that have all this information already drawn in you may want to bring those in already and just copy paste them into and move them into location or you may have something that you're using as a reference such as the sample drawings that we had for the marion um, there are some problems with those, but we're going to be making some corrections and we'll hopefully get this to um, how I want it uh, to indicate uh, the typical wall section for this house. Now, early on, I already uh, mentioned that this section, wall section in here, is typical of the way that construction may have been done in the 60s and so on. We're using common rafters, we're using ceiling joists, a lot of the construction. Um, right now uses roof trusses. So the, all these connection details right in here and the representations of the roof truss would obviously be different. Um, for now, we're going to go ahead and for this assignment, we're going to be showing the common rafter um, together with the ceiling joists and using top plates on top of a poured tie beam that goes around. So let's go ahead and let's begin to copy some of the elements and bring them over to where we want. So let's bring it from that snap point. I'm going to bring it up to in here. But if you notice, there's a little bit of a problem. Okay, if you take a look at this is the right size of the text that we want. So if you go to your wall section, I'm going to go ahead and double click it and you notice it's not showing up there. That is because this is already set to three quarters inch. So what we need to do is Sometimes, if that item right in here does not have, I'm going to go to the annotate tab in here, does not have the current scale on it, okay, um, it won't show up. So if we look at add delete scales right in there, you notice that the only scale for that object, which is the text box with the uh, information on it, when we brought it over, it only has a scale of quarter inch. And that is correct because we brought it over from our elevations which are set to quarter inch but in bringing it over we need to change that so we need to bring that down uh, in size remember the inverse relationship to three quarter inch now currently it doesn't have that scale attached to it so we need to add the current scale to it so with it highlighted, we can go back to our annotate tab here. Let's go to annotation scaling panel at the end, and we can add the current scale. And the minute that I did that, you notice that this modified. And when we go back to the wall section, you notice that now it shows up. Now the reason it did not show up before is because if you look on your status bar down at the bottom, this 
icon right here, which if you remember your lesson with um, scales, with the actual hand drawing scales, um, this looks like the end of a triangular scale. That's why they're using as the item. So you've got a couple of items in here for it. This one is add scales to annotative objects when the annotation scales. I have that off. Some um, architects and some engineers want that on. But this one is going to be important. If you show annotation objects at current scale, you will see them all the time. We have that off. Um, if I had not changed the scale already for that font and turned this on, it would obviously show um, that. I'm going to leave it off for now. And I'm going to go back to the model. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going... Now you notice it's got the two scales on it. We're getting that ghosting as we do it. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down to about here. And I'm going to start adding the additional notes here, either, either going from the um, sample drawings, copy pasting them in, or I'm going to go ahead and type for that. And I'm going to do all this before I add any leaders. So what I want to do is put my information here sort of in a location of that's going to be easy to draw a leader to where I can point at the item and then back to the note. Notice it's left justified. That's what I want on, on there. And what I also want to do is just like this one right in here, if you look and highlight it, there is no ghosting because it only has that one scale. Remember when we copied it over? This one has the two. Now, I don't want both in there because this to me is extremely annoying. So with it highlighted, you can go back to the annotate tab and the annotation scaling um, panel. Go add delete scale. And we're going to delete the quarter inch from it. And that makes our life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and let's begin to put the additional information that we want in here. And as I mentioned before, we can probably relocate some of this stuff as we draw. So a couple of ways that we can do that. We can either go to the annotate. Make sure you go to your text panel here and go to multi-line text. So we could do that. And we can create a text box. Make sure cap locks is on. And let's go ahead and we can begin typing. Um, two by six. Whoop. Roof rafter at 24 inches on center. Okay, now notice that I didn't put the inches in here. This is implied already. So some of the firms will definitely put the inches on there. I don't find it necessary. And I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Now, if you notice, I'm just doing this out of habit and out of experience on where I might want it eventually. Now, that will always be changing. So let's go ahead. And the other way, rather than having to go to annotate and just create a new box all the time for this, is to go ahead and just start copying. So I can copy this one down to here. I'm going to hi highlight it. And I'm going to put baffle. Okay. Now these are individual items that I'm going to be putting leaders onto, such as the baffle, which is indicated here the roof rafters, which are the space in between here, would be the side of that roof rafter. This represents the bottom of it, and the top of it is right up against our plywood sheathing right in here. But some items use a longer note where we have combined items. So this note for the concrete roof tile includes the roof tile, includes the building papers, the roofing papers that go underneath it. It includes also um, how information on how it may be applied. And it also includes the plywood sheathing underneath it. So this one note will take care of a number of the different items. So we're going to be using a combination of those two items. So let's go ahead and 
I'm going to once again notice I'm always modifying this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and copy another one. And this one I wanted to point to this connector right in here. Now all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put in um, some information. I'm just going to put XXX until I can go back to my notes and I can find out exactly what connector we ended up doing there, of using. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put some additional I'm going to move this up a little bit. Bring this down to here. And let's go ahead and begin to adjust this. So this one is going to be 2x6. I'm using PT. That stands for pressure treated. And this is what we call a top plate. Now I'm referring right here to this item right here. So that is our pressure treated top plate and um, in one of the lectures I explained what pressure treated means. Um, we can get into another discussion of that. But basically what it is is a piece of lumber or piece of wood that is treated with pressure and a chemical so that its um, interaction with either concrete or masonry um, will help retard the um, corrosion of the uh, of the wood or the rotting of the wood. So let's go ahead top plate. I'm going to go ahead and copy some more. I'm going to start putting these underneath. And this is going to be one half inch. Anchor bolt. Now, because I typed one half inch and it recognizes it the way that it's done, I really don't want that shown that way in this drawing. So what I can do is I can highlight, open this up, I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to go back, we did this before on the elevation, so I'm going to unstack, and that's how I want it to read on this one. So that's going to be the one half inch anchor bolt. Down. Now the spacing, even the spacing that I'm bringing it down can always adjust. All right, so I'm going to do galvanized. Metal grip. Edge. Over one by two. Now what we actually drew in here is a 1 by 3, so if you want to adjust this to 1 by 3, I'm fine with that. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of these and then come back in and change them. this we have the same issue with here so all I got to do is highlight it and I'm going to unstack it and let it be like that. Now this is something that we could set up in a setting but 
um, when we do our our multi-line text style now if you notice up in here we are set to annotative I don't want this change because we use that style um, a lot in terms of our floor plans in terms of all our dimensions um, and information that we had so I don't want to modify that at this point the solution might be to create a second um, text style and be able to set it up so its, its settings would allow for unstacked uh, fractions. So let's continue. I am reviewing my drawing that showed some additional information. So let's go ahead and copy a couple of these down. modify this one so I got my minimum 5 8 inch stucco there I've got my galvanized metal drip edge over I need to change that one okay so let's go ahead and adjust that one so this one we're gonna do that and start there. I'm going to do number nine. Gauge. Horizontal. Ladder type. Joint. Reinforcing. 16 inches on center vertical and we can just put typical for that now what this is referring to is that our block every other block is going to have what we call a horizontal reinforcing and the reason they call it a uh, ladder type is because in some instances it looks like a ladder and it's just laid on inside the mortar um, between our blocks so that would be done let's say we would start on this after the second course is laid here then another one would be laid up in here and part laid up in there so let's make sure that we're not duplicating anything in here so these two still need to be modified so let's go ahead and modify this one down in here and let's go ahead and let's put in minimum. Oh, I think we already did that one. So let's just back up there. And let's go ahead, um, two coats over eight inch masonry. That's the minimum five eighths inch stucco coat, coats on metal lath. That is for the soffit. We do need to do one minimum five eighths inch. stucco and once again we're going to do two coats over eight inch masonry block let's go ahead and highlight that right click unstack so once again, this is an example where we are indicating the stucco here, but we're also referencing the fact that it is on 8-inch masonry block. And I misspelled that, so let's go ahead and fix that up. Always be reviewing your text also. So now what we can do is we can zoom in a little bit more into our um, area near the bottom. So let's pan up. this one and bring it somewhere down in here and let's start with a three-quarter inch block recess let's go ahead and highlight three-quarter inch 
unstack it. Well, let's zoom in a little bit before we do that, because I found it difficult to highlight it. And let's go to unstack. We could indicate the finished grade just so that you know what it is with an additional note to it. Um, what we probably want is we want at least some information on how much cover um, we want um, between the grade and the bottom of our foundation. So we could do that with, um, um, let's say, a note that's going to say finish grade minimum 8 inch cover which refers to this. Um, again, the grade in a real-life situation is never going to be straight across, and it may vary in here. But you may want a typical um, elevation drop between what would you consider the slab and your grade. But because the terrain is rarely flat, I would not give that information. But I would give the information regarding minimum cover. Because we don't want this too far down close to the bottom edge because in case of rain and so on you may what we get a washout and you may undermine the soil that's underneath uh, the bottom of the footers. So let's go ahead and let's copy this guy. And let's go ahead and add the note for the grade. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring it underneath my top of slab because I really don't want too many lines crossing there. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, finish grade 8 inch minimum cover. Okay, so I think we've got all the information we want on this side. Um, I could begin bringing them in and notice if I do want to modify some of this I can just double click it and I can grab this. If I want that one by three in the next line like that, I could. If I wanted this, let's say over like that, I can. And what it does, it maybe begins to set up a right side, which looks pretty good to me. I could even do it to this one. Let's pull that so on goes on down there. That one. Actually, that looks pretty good, and we're going to be ready to relocate these once we start adding the leaders. Now, some of the information is easier to put on the right-hand side of your wall section. So what we can do at this point is we're going to go ahead and just copy one of them. And we can copy it from here to perpendicular. Remember, it's not going to be this line. This line is going to represent our break lines to show where that section ends. And here I'm gonna I'm reviewing right now what we have in terms of my sample drawing or additional information that I'm using as a reference. And I'm gonna begin to put this up in here. And I can say two by six since I happen to be using that one also. I'm gonna put Ceiling joists. All right, looks like I need to check my spelling. And I'm going to be giving this information. I'm going to do at 24 inches on center. Go ahead and copy this down. And I'm going to bring this down to here. And I'm going to do, I'm going to give a value to the insulation. So I'm going to say it's going to be R30. That insulation. Now again, this may vary. Typically you're not going to vary it in the house too much, but depending on the project that you're doing and depending on the location, where it is, you may either have to increase or you don't need as much insulation. Typically you do. So we're going to leave it at 430 for the bat insulation. Here's another example of a note that combines both the drywall and these metal hi-hats, which when I was drawing 
um, the section I explained. So let's go ahead and modify that. And that is going to be one half inch. Gypsum board. Whoops. Let's go ahead and highlight this and let's unstack it. Now sometimes if you're going to have so many fractional notes it will become easier to go ahead and set up a, uh, a textile that will include that already as unstacked. So let's go ahead and copy this down. One by now typically it'd be one by two pressure treated fire stop. Now again we're indicating as one by three, so depending on the design and depending on what you want to do, also check codes. You're gonna want that located as um, because we drew it as a one by three because of the samples we were getting. We're going to go ahead and leave it at one by three. Go ahead and copy this. Now you could copy it as I did here three or four times down and then modify them, but it got a little bit confusing for me on which note stayed or not. So I'm going to go ahead and this way I know that the last one that I did coming down needs to be um, corrected. So here we're going to go ahead and start adding some additional dimension. So we're going to do Concrete tie beam. And I'm going to leave that note continuous around perimeter. I'm not going to bother with that. But what we can add is let me go ahead and put a C structural. Now this implies that there is a structural set of documents that will be um, complementary to the architectural set and rather than indicating the information of how much reinforcing um, etc might be in it we just make a reference to structural typically um, you always need to reference if for example I was to put the information here I could put 8 by 12 concrete tie beam with four number fives um, continuous or two number fives top, two number fives reinforcing bottom. But in this case what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and just saying 8 by 12 concrete tie beam um, C structural. So let's go ahead, I'm going to copy that down. I think there's not much going on in here but we are going to have another note. Let me go ahead and reference or refer to my um, notes in here, my reference notes. And what I can do is, let me go ahead and zoom in. And the next, next note that I want to do is I want to do one half inch. Some board over one by two or one by three, depending on what uh, you're going to be using. change this to at 16 inches on center and 
and then also with what we call 4.2 alfoil. Insulation. Okay, so I've got to go ahead and highlight this, and I'm going to go ahead and unstack that. Everything looks pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and move this up to here. I'm going to copy this one, which is going to be a lot of it is common to this fire stop that we're going to add in here. So this one can say one by three fire stop at uh, let's call it mid height or not to exceed eight feet. And that would be above AFF which represents finished floor. So what they're trying to do is to create a fire stop in here. Since our ceiling is at 8 foot 11, this one is not going to suffice here. So what we want to do is we want to create one at midpoint, but it cannot be the distance from the bottom to from the finished floor to that first fire stop. It cannot be more than 8 feet. So. Uh, you can do it at mid-height. You can also place it across since it's continuous around. You can place it um, where it would be beneficial to the construction at a construction joint for the drywall um, that's going on so that it would have some edge um, connection also. Let's go ahead and copy this again and bring that down to here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm just going to do specified baseboard. That is referring to this wood trim piece that would be along the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that down here. And I also want to reference the nailer, the 1x3 nailer. So. So I'm just going to put one by three wood nailer at base of wall. And remember when you do your drywall and you do your nailer that you leave a space between the top of the slab and the bottom. Again, you don't have necessarily information regarding on what the finish could be. It could be vinyl tile, which wouldn't require too much space, but it could also be carpet with a nice under carpet part to it could be a nice thick marble or granite top with a mortar base so this is going to vary so specified baseboard is there one by three wood nailer at base of wall so And I'm going to go ahead and add just a note in there, whether it's necessary or not. Coordinate wood floor finish. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and let's copy this down. Any one of these would work fine for me. And I'm going to begin a note here, which is going to, again, combine a number of items in here. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. For this one, we are representing the concrete slab. Concrete slab. With six inches by inch space 1.4 WWM now that represents the welded wire mesh this is the size of the grid and this is the gauge of the metal and that represents these two items right in here 
So I'm going to add a note right in that, which says um, double. Reinforcing for 60 inches at perimeter. Close. And then we can put over 6 mil, which is the thickness of the vapor barrier. This information is information that helps the contractor and gives them standards that they need to go with. So we've got our 6x6, six 1.4, 1 1.4 welded wire mesh, double reinforced for 60 inches at perimeter, and then it's over 6 mil vapor barrier right there, and then it has a 4 inch gravel um, bed on well compacted, let's correct my spelling. Termite treated clean fill. Now, again, each company might have a slightly different um, note attached to that. Uh, traditionally, it was welded with 6x6, 1010 welded Meyer mesh. Um, so we can leave this at here, let's say over 6 mil vapor barrier. On, We could have added well compacted um, gravel bed on well compacted termite. Um, treated fill. Let's just leave it like this. The reason the compacting is necessary is because you have to make sure that the strength of the soil underneath will hold the loads for it. The actual strength of the soil, whether it's uh, 2500 or 300 PSF or 3000 um, PSF, which means pounds per square foot, represents how much the soil will hold in terms of the vertical loads coming onto it. Oftentimes, the undisturbed soil will not be strong enough to do that, so you have to use mechanical means to compact it and also adding gravel um, to it. Some sections will also have a sand bed included, depending on where you're building which part of the country. So let's go ahead and I'm going to move this. Actually, I'm going to move these up a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this in. And I'm going to put finish floor. And I'm just going to put in parentheses by others. Now, if you know the material that it's going to be, but since this is a typical wall section, it may bear, vary uh, depending on where, you know, which room the section is cut through. But if we're going to call it a typical wall section, it could be in a bedroom and it could also be in the kitchen. So this finished floor may vary. So instead of by others, why don't we just change the note and we'll say, room finish schedule. Now, some drawings will not have a schedule for you to put it, to take a look at, and they leave it for a decision to be made later on between you as the architect. Um, I did copy there, I meant to move. And the owner, or if you're working with um, what we call a basic set of builder set of documents. You may be working directly with the builder and the builder will be coordinating with the client on the final selections of the finished floor or on whatever the floors might be. And then finally, let's add one more note down 
here, which will be monolithic footing. And I'm going to say speed. The reason I put C structural again is because depending on the vertical loads, the size of this and the reinforcing may vary. So by referring to our structural set of drawings or let's say a foundation plan that may be drawn on a full set, um, you won't have that conflict. So let's say for example the footing changes on the structural plans, this way you don't have to come back and change the size or the reinforcing. You don't want to duplicate um, the information you're giving here. Um, that's also being giving, given in another sheet, unless it's absolutely necessary. So I'm going to back up a little bit, and I'm going to take a look at my sheet and see what it looks like. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I think this column may be a little bit too far, so I may want to pull it in maybe to about here and I'm going to obviously be doing some adjustments. So I'm going to go to the model. I'm going to use my stretch command and I'm going to bring all that in maybe to about here. So that looks pretty good. So now what I want to be able to do is I'm going to relocate some of this so it looks a little bit um, not everything is stacked up in here and I can bring some of this information down. Now some of it has to stay up in here so that um, we don't um, get too far away from the item that we're trying to identify. Now I still don't have my information for this one here. So let's see. I could also put my information on the roof rafter over on this side. So I think I am going to do that. I'll go ahead and move this to about here. And I'm going to use the move command. And just move from here. To, let's say about here. Okay, so let's see. This one is going to represent my, as I mentioned before, my clip that I have in there. Uh, 2x6 top plate can point to that. Anchor bolt's going to be a little bit of a problem because it's going through here. So I'm going to go ahead and move this down. Let's just grab them all because I don't want them to get too much over there. So I'm going to move my anchor bolt to here. And let's see what I've got in terms of my... I don't have my information here. One half inch anchor bolt. Drip edge over nailer. Yep, that there it is right there. I want that located maybe there. And I still haven't called this out. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that I call out my 2x8 structural wood fascia that I'm drawing right in there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. Bring that down. And this one I'm going to change to 2 by 8. Structural wood fascia. Let's bring that down just a little bit. So I can easily get this to continuous vent right in there. I can bring that up into there. Let's bring these up just a tad. A lot of fine tuning to get this to look right once I start adding my leaders. And again, I may even modify them once I do my leaders also. So let's take a look at um, Looks like most of it is already set up 
correctly. I'm just going to go back to the wall section and take a look at it. That looks better to me. Okay. So having gone back to my sheet, everything I think looks pretty good, and I may be ready to remove some of these um, temporary guidelines. Let me go back to my model. And I am going to go ahead and delete this line out of there. Now a lot of this I can probably modify a little bit. I still need to go back and take a look at what my um, actual specification is for that. But I also want to, I'm going to go ahead and move these two. Now even with that line done, as long as I keep my ortho on, I should be pretty good there in terms of keeping them aligned. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this. And let's bring that down to here. So making sure that our scale is, and I had accidentally changed it back to 3 quarter inch. I want it to one quarter inch. I want it back to three quarter inch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start doing my leaders. Now, if you notice under the annotate tab, you have a multi leader command, but that usually requires text to go with it. I'm going to go ahead and use the Q leader command. Now, if you notice, we're still set to Q leader when we were started to do some of our um, information on the elevations. So our dimension style is set still set to it. So the arrowhead for our Q leader should be annotative and basically be now looking at the three quarter inch annotation scale and come out the right size. So let's go ahead and let's see if we have a Q leader command that we've used recently. No, I've done too many commands. So I'm going to start with the Q, find my Q leader, and I'm looking at my first note and I'm going to go up in this direction and go. Now I don't want these to be too flat like this. It doesn't look good. I always want a shoulder so what I want to do is just keep these more in a vertical. I don't want the shoulder to be too long but I definitely want something that I can see. So I'm going to go ahead and click here first. Put my ortho on. Click here and click escape. Now if you look at the arrow size here it looks like it came in at the right size. And if you compare it to the arrow sizes here, okay, it's going to be once printing, this one's a lot smaller, once when we go to paper space, they should look the same size. All right, so that's excellent. Let's go ahead and repeat Q leader. This is our baffle. I go ahead and do it from maybe this point right here. Now, once again, this is a good example of why I want my cursor to go all the way across my screen. I can line it up with roughly where the beginning or the middle of my note is. Put ortho back on and bring that to there. Okay, let's go ahead. Now, this is going to be referencing my clip in here. So, I can go back to repeat Q leader. I'm going to go ahead and put that arrow there. F8. Go to there. Next is going to be my top plate, which is this element right here. Repeat Q leader. Top of beam establishes where our perimeter beam, tie beam, goes around. Galvanized metal drip edge over 1 by 3 nailer refers to this. So what I may want to do there is I may just want to put an arrow directly to it or just go ahead and put a shoulder like this and then point up to it. So let's go to Q leader and let's see what I can do. Let's go ahead and let's just go from um, right here and press escape. And that looks okay for that. Two by eight structural wood fascia. We're going to go and refer to that. Repeat Q leader. Let's 
tape. Half inch anchor bolt. I'm going to go to this one. But because of this note it's going to refer to this, I don't want them crossing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move these around a little bit. I'm going to bring this one back up to here. And bring this one into here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give my note to my vent in here. And I can also, the 5 8 inch stucco on high rib metal lath, I could have put this right in here. So let's go ahead and let's even modify that a little bit more. I'm going to bring this up to here. down so that they're not crowding. What you also don't want to do is you don't want these notes to crowd each other. Now sometimes you're going to have a lot of notes so you won't always have the luxury of separating these um, too much. Okay so that looks good. Obviously we still have to make some adjustments in here. Let's go back to our Q leader command. 5 8 inch stucco. I don't want it crossing with my vent, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark it here. My ortho. Repeat Q leader for the vent. Now I can refer to my anchor bolt. And I'm going to make sure that I've got my gauge. Um, I'm going to have to bring that in as a block. So I've got, it's going to be located every other course. So it would be located here, here. Let's do that again. It would be here, 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 here. Okay, so we can actually point it out to either this one. Or we can point it out to the one above that. So let's go ahead and let's go to our Q leader. And let's go ahead and point it to this one right here. And that's going to be located somewhere in here. So I'm just going to put the arrow or my leader arrow right onto there. This one we could do straight across. quarter inch block recess. This is obviously where we want it a little bit further down. I'm going to go ahead and move this up a little bit. Back to Q leader. And finish grade. I'm going to bring down a little bit. Leader again. And just put that in here. And so what I can do is I can put a dimension in here, which is at least going to show that. Now I've got to be careful here because I don't necessarily want that Q leader dimension style for uh, any dimensions that I would put in here. And there's a couple of them that I need to put in. For example, I need to make sure to put in the two foot. Um, dimension line for our typical overhang. So what I definitely want to do is I want to go back and go back to my annotative. That way it's going to be the tick marks and everything's going to be correct. And I'm going to go to linear and I'm going to go to the end of my rafter at this point which corresponds with this point right in here. And I'm going to go to my edge of block. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring this um, let's bring this down to about, actually we could put it right in here. I think that's going to look alright. Now there is some crossing there, but uh, there's some things that are inevitable and you really can't avoid too much. Now if I wanted to bring that down a little bit more, I guess I could. Um, this looks like a, that doesn't look exactly the way I wanted to, so let me go ahead and grab this. And I'm going to bring it down maybe... Let's bring it up. Let's bring it about to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and move the information. I'm 
grab this by the grip and pull that over to here. All right, so that looks better. Okay, and then the other dimension I was talking about doing was here and putting a dimension from here to here. That sort of represents the minimum 8 inch cover. Now I'm going to go back and so that I can get my size of the arrowhead correctly for the rest of it, I'm going to go ahead and change it back to the Q leader dimension style. So everything looks pretty good so far. I can now go ahead and um, let's go ahead and delete this for now. Again, if we keep ortho, everything will stay lined up the way we want it to. And I also want maybe to get rid of this so I can, I can see exactly how that's going to work. Now, what I had done in the meantime, I had gone ahead and created a couple of more blocks. I'm going to go ahead and move these, which down to here. These two blocks represent our brake lines, and one is for a quarter inch scale, and the other one is for three quarter inch scale. This is the one we want to use. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down to our section, and I'll put it in here for now. And first of all, I need to see what layer we're on to make sure that it is correct. And I do want it in the A and O. We can do it for dims or notes. So it is still on elevation layer. So I got to check all of these, by the way. All of these we need to adjust. Now, I had mentioned before that because it's not lined up, it really doesn't matter. But we do want to maintain some consistency. So I may have to come back and for all of these um, notes and leaders, I'm going to go ahead and change that eventually and create another layer specifically for the wall section. So I'm going to go ahead and move this for now. And I'm just going to bring it to there and to here. I'm going to eliminate that guideline and just pull these in just a little bit from the edges, grab it by the grip and grab that by the grip into there. So that looks pretty good for that brake line. I'm going to copy it down. Make sure ortho is on again. Just bring it a little bit above the last element that you're cutting. And we can grab that and bring that down just a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. Now if you still want to trim this out, I guess we could use that as our cutting edge and see if we can trim our hatch located right there. All right, so that's looking great. Um, again, I may modify this so that my the leader doesn't cut right through the brake line. So two ways to do it. I could stretch this down to about here. Now notice I'm not worried too much about the hatch stretching because I'm doing it sort of within itself and bring that down to about there. And then I can put my leaders. Uh, coming to the right location. So, alrighty, that looks good. Not quite sure what this line was, so I may want to delete that line. Okay, let's start with our Q leaders again. Let's go back to annotate. We're set the Q leader in here. And I'm going to begin putting a little bit more information from this side. So let's see if I can find it under the recent input queue leader. There it is. There's my rafter. This is my ceiling joists. And if it doesn't come right to the middle, of your fonts, you can always modify that a little bit. Let's go to that. That's our R30 bat insulation, Q leader. There's our gypsum board applied to the 7 8 inch metal hi hat, so I'm going to highlight that. There's our fire stop at the break between the ceiling and the wall. There's our 
tie beam. Half gypsum over one by three furring. I can just do that straight from here. And if I'm not too happy with the location, I can always just adjust it a little bit like that. And I can bring some of these elements up a little bit. We've also got, let's do our Q leader again. We've got our midpoint fire stop. We've got a wood nailer at our base. Got a specified baseboard. I can move that down just a little bit. Make sure it goes on. Move this guy down a little bit. Back to Q leader. Slab. And once you've established this, and this is one of the reasons that I use the Q leader, because it's, to me, it's a little bit easier to use. Um, and then finally, I've got the last one, the Q leader, and I'm just going to go straight across with this one. I think that's looking pretty good. A couple things still missing that I need to do and I need to fix. For example, I don't have my pitch symbol in here, so what I can do is I can, the same way, let me see if I've got one up in here. I don't think I, well, there we go. I created one already, so I'm going to copy that from here down to here. That looks pretty good. 5 to 12 is the pitch for this one. Again, you can modify this depending on the pitch of the roof that you've selected or that the designer has selected. Um, so a couple things I need to add. I need to find the specification for my connector here. And I also need to find a block or at least create one for the ladder uh, type joint reinforcing that I can indicate so that will be clearly shown. Um, there may be some other items that I need to do, but let's take a look real quick at the wall section. And that looks great. Now, it looks like it's floating, as I mentioned before, in the middle of a large sheet, but usually this wall section would be combined with a number of other ones. So let me go ahead and close that out. We'll go back to model space, and I will try to get the additional information and the blocks for those two items that I think are still missing. All right, so what I've done is I went and looked up what this block that I had. So in actuality, I think if you click on it and it's a block reference, we can actually go to the properties and it's called a hurricane gusset angle. So I'm gonna do change this note. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this by its grip out of the way because the note's gonna be a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this to hurricane gusset angle and I'm also going to say C structural All right, so it looks like it's getting a little bit crowded there so I'm going to go ahead and modify this just a tiny bit using the stretch command I'm going to pull that up a little bit like that also going to do the baffle using my crossing selection and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for here so it's not crowding too much the note that's below it. You don't want that to happen because you may get confused on what note represents what. 
So that looks a little bit better. I can actually bring this back down just a tiny bit. Now this is getting a little bit uh, tedious, but uh, sometimes it helps the drawing and it looks so much better when you do it. So that takes care of the note that we wanted for the gusset angle. Now typically if you're using trusses or so on, this would be something different. It could be a hurricane strap that would strap over it. It could be clips. It could be a series of different things, but because of our arrangement here and the way we had our gusset plate and so on, um, I went ahead and went with a hurricane gusset angle. That would be something uh, to go coordinate with your structural engineer or to coordinate with your truss manufacturer or a roof framer uh, to make sure that it meets not just the, the lateral loads that may be imposed on it, uh, not too much. These don't really deal too much with the vertical loads, but definitely with what we call uplift loads in terms of making sure that your roof doesn't become an airplane wing and flies off. Now, regarding the ladder insulation that I've called out before, I was unable to find a block for it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and draw um, that for it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a, let's see if we can find something in here for a detail um, that we can use. So for example, this right in here, if you look at the layers that it's on, it's a block reference. Um, there's some other items in here. Let me see what we're calling this one. Uh, it's just using line work, which a lot of our section is. So I'm going to go ahead and switch at least that to a line that, because it's going to be a small item, I really want almost either a thin line or what we call a fine line. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the fine line into there. And I'm going to do a two point circle and draw that to there. Now that may be indicating something a little bit bigger than what it actually is, but I'm also going to take it over to the other side. I'm just going to mirror it. I don't want to change my source object. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And I am going to be copying it from every 16 inches. So there's 8, there's 16. There's 8, there's 16. And the last one is here. And let's see if I can also bring it up to, let's go to that point. And I've indicated now where my uh, nine gauge uh, horizontal ladder type reinforcing is. So let's go ahead and let's see what it looks like on the wall section. So there it is. We can zoom in a little bit and that's looking pretty good. Once again, if you think this triangle's too big, easy. Let's go ahead and reduce it. I think we did that anyways with the elevations. I'm going to go ahead and from there I'm going to introduce maybe 0.75 and then all I got to do is I got to make sure that my numbers are not too far away from the element but that looks a little bit better it's not so overpowering um, for what we want I'm going to shift that out a little bit so it's a little bit closer to that let's go back to our wall section let's take a look at that I think everything looks very good in here once again, this is something that we can give a final uh, look through each one of the sheets, which I'm going to do right now before finishing this video. So let's start with our site plan. We can take a look at a number of items that we have in here. That looks great. We continue going through. All of that looks good. Elevations. Wall section looks good, but we had said that we were going to do one more thing. So. Um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that any dimensions and any um, annotation, including leaders, et cetera, that we have on here um, is going to be in a consistent layer, um, you know, type of layering that we've done in the past. So since we have created an A anno dim and an A anno note for almost everything in here, Let's go ahead and let's create one for the sections. So again, I can, I can be on any one of these annotation layers. I'm gonna go ahead and click new. I'm gonna do A, take my cat lock off, A. 
dash Anna dash note dash I'm going to put SECT for section and I can leave everything as what it is. Then I'm going to go ahead and now create just one more A dash Anno dash dim S and dash section and leave that as where it is. So I'm going to go ahead and make that my current one. Although we've kind of already let the horse out of the barn. So I'm going to go ahead and start highlighting all of this. Not going to do the dimension, but I'm going to go ahead and do this one. And I've got to be careful that I don't grab anything that is, is part of your drawing. So make sure that you're real careful. If you wanted to be a little bit more careful, you could easily just isolate the existing layers that you want to change. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to isolate. Whoops. Let's undo that. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to let's see what happens. I need to select that. That. I want to select that. Let's go ahead and see what this is. Hit enter. And I think we've got everything that we want. So there's two dimensions that I want to put in the dims layer, the A and O dims. And I've got the rest of it that I want to change the layer um, and change it to A and O notes section. So let's go ahead and I'm going to change all of these. Including everything in here. I'm going to go ahead and change my, since it's part of the notes layer, I guess we could include the break lines. And let's go ahead and change this too. And let's go ahead and change the layer to A and O note section. Okay. And let's see. And then these two, I want to change to a and O note or A and O dims sections. So let's go ahead and do that. Right in there. Okay, close. And then we're going to unisolate everything. Hopefully everything comes back the way it was supposed to be. And let's just double check everything one more time. So let's go to the one site. Looks good. Um, we had made that section change at the beginning of the video go here that looks good everything is looking fantastic and okay I think we're looking good I'm gonna make sure I'm in paper space I'm just gonna move my title for up a little bit closer to the drawing itself try to keep it underneath or at least within the drawing elements that you've got um, go back to the site plan and on the next video, we will learn how to go ahead and publish our drawings. That means we're going to go ahead and virtually print them to a PDF and locate them in a folder and then combine them all into one larger PDF. So when we issue uh, drawings or email them and so on, we only have one file to issue.